Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we will be looking at the 30th problem from the CP31 sheet by TL eliminators under the 900th questions. Let's go. So moved on to my 900 sheet over here, ticked off and went to the 30th problem, 01 game. Okay, let's open this. Alice and Bob are playing a game. Initially, they have a binary string S consisting of only characters 0 and 1. Now, Alice and Bob make alternating moves. Alice plays first, Bob makes second, Alice plays third, so forth and so on. During each move, the current player must choose two different adjacent characters of S and delete them. For example, if S equals to 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, so forever, so you can delete S1 and S2, right? This is 1, 0. They have blacked it off also. Or you delete like S2, S2, S3, or like S4, S5, or like S6, S7. Basically, two different adjacent characters. You take them, you delete them. That is one move that a player makes. Now, if a player cannot make any move, they lose. Both players play optimally. You have to determine if Alice can win. Okay. So they have given the string S and they want basically a yes, no answer. A small difference is they're looking for yes and no in Russian. So you're printing DA, that is DA if it's yes. That is if Alice wins and net or that is no in Russian if they or if Alice doesn't win. Okay. Basic enough. Let us generalize this problem quickly and see what are they asking. We start off by saying there is a string S. Okay. And this is a binary string. So it's made only from zeros and ones. So I'll just take an example like this only. 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. So 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay. Binary string made up only of ones and zeros, right? In this, we have all ones, uh, like we have sums and ones and zeros. So now, after the string is given, they are saying there are two players, okay? They have also given them the famous names, Alice and Bob. All right, Alice and Bob are playing a game on the string. What they do is, they go by turns. Alice starts first. So Alice, Bob, Alice, Bob alternate. Alice says, I'm going to pick up any two indices which are different of characters. As in, let's say I pick up these two positions, okay? This, these two positions will have a one and a zero. Or maybe I could have picked up these two positions. This is a zero and one. Or like two adjacent places which have different characters. Maybe this one, this is also good to go. So Alice says, I'll pick up in my turn some adjacent characters which are different and I'll delete them completely. So maybe Alice picks up these two and deletes them. So let's say zero and one, gone. Different characters, totally gone. Now comes Bob turn. So Alice's turn is done. You go to Bob, you say, okay, Bob, do your turn. Bob says, okay, great. Let me delete some more, delete it. Let's say back to Alice. Alice says, okay, I want again two different characters. Let's delete them. Okay, delete it. And now when the turn comes to Bob, Bob cannot make a move. So because Bob cannot make a move on this particular string right now, because zero ones, one zeros, whatever were there, you deleted, and now you have a single one left, which is not as what we want. We want two different characters, Bob loses. And we can say that for this initial string that we started off with, that was looking something like one zero, one zero, one, one zero, zero, one, Alice has won the game. Okay, so you would print basically, yes, that's a standard thing that we do. But in this question, they are just a little different. They are saying that you would be printing in Russian da, or you would be printing in Russian, no, that is net. Okay, great. So I think we have understood the question. So for this uh, sample case, let's say I have this one over here. Let me take uh, one more simulation over this case and see what is going to be our answer. So let's say the string looks like 0, 0, 1 and 1. Now what I can do is I can delete these two. All right. Once I delete these two, Alice's turn I can say is done, right? Alice's turn is done. And once these two are deleted, now the string looks like this. So completely new modified string. Now Bob can delete these two together, right? Because you can imagine there is no space left between them. You can say that it has come closer because the string is modifying itself, right? It went from 0, 0, 1, 1 to 0, 1. Now Bob can take up these two positions. They are of course adjacent. They are of course uh, like deletable and they're uh, different. So Bob's turn is done. And now basically the string has become empty. There's nothing that's left. S has totally become empty. And now when we come back to Alice, Alice cannot play a move because Alice has, of course, nothing to work on. So Alice loses. Hence, you print NET, that is no. So if you go back in the case, this is no. All right, net. So a very simple problem, just that you are trying to go about a simulation of a game where you delete adjacent characters of different nature. And as soon as some player is not able to do that, you stop. And the important point is we start with Alice. So we have to figure out where and where we should stop. Okay. Now, let us do something. We can now discuss the expected time complexity in this problem. Okay. So we know that one second basically allows me 10 raised to 8 operations. 
one second basically allows me 10 raised to 8 elementary operations and in this problem it's pretty much clear that we are allowed one second for every test so if i write one test it basically allows me 10 raised to 8 operations now inside every test there are some test cases which is given by this variable t which is actually in thousand order so we should calculate the number of operations per test case that would again now be 10 raised to 8 upon 10 raised to 3 which is actually 10 raised to 5 which means I have 10 raised to 5 elementary operations to be performed for every test case. Now, if you look at the size of the string S for every test case, it's a maximum 100 order. So I can say N, maybe that's the size of the string S, just a simple variable. N is given a 100 order. So that means I can create solutions like N square also, right? Even a little higher than this, maybe like N square log base 2N also works, right? Because if you plug in 100 in this, it's 100 square log base 2 of 100, which would be less than 10 power 5, all right? And if anything above this, let's say you go in cubic order, that's a problem. Now, cubic doesn't work. So cubic is a no. N square log N is something like it's not traditional, but if we go to that limit, it's fine. N square, of course, is fine. It's lower than this and so forth like O of N and so on till constant time, everything is fine. So solutions pretty much in this order make sense. They are going to work, but cubic orders don't make sense. And this is my expected time complexity discussion because now this is telling me, okay, maybe if you run solutions in square order, that will work, but don't make an order of cubic manner that is not going to work. Now it's not necessary that I actually make a square order of time complexity. Maybe I create something that's like O of N or maybe better than that, but we have a brief idea of what complexities I might rotate to. Okay. Now that I have this picture in mind, this expected time complexity in mind, if I ask you, can I do some sort of a brute solution in this? As in, let's just say that you keep on picking up some zeros and ones or ones and zeros, and you keep on modifying this string again and again and again again until you actually can vice versa rotating between Alice and Bob and so forth. Just like this implementation that we are trying to picture, if you do this, that's not going to work because you can imagine this also visualize this also that it's going to cost you a very high time complexity to make this decision with zero and one should I take and then who will uh, that is currently Alice's turn. Then let's say again, I trade back on the string, identify zeros and ones or ones or zeros as adjacent questions again, keep on modifying and do that part that's going to be a very high time complexity. We need to do something smarter. We need quicker answer than that. And is that possible in this? Yes, there is. Okay. It's a very simple argument in this problem, which is going to help us visualize and get to our main solution. Argument is, I'll write this argument equals to the number, the number of substrings of 0, 1 or 1, 0 nature is actually equal to the minimum of C0 and C1. What is the meaning of this? I am saying that the number of substrings or adjacent characters of different nature, that is zero one or one zero, those are the only two possibilities, are in count equal to the minimum of C0. C0 means count of zeros and C1, that is count of ones. So if I have the value that is count of zeros, if I have the value that is count of ones in my string right now, the minimum of those two numbers is actually the number of substrings I have. Now, why is this helpful? I'll let's just assume for right now, this argument is true. If you assume this argument is true, don't you think our whole situation has eased out very much? I have like this in a quick blink, I have the number of times I can delete this uh, different ca adjacent characters as a substring. And if I have that value, let's say this is this value, let's say V, then from this V value, I can quickly denote whether Alice wins or not. Because I know that Alice always starts. So assuming, let's say you have this V value. Okay, let's just say V is three. So that means you can basically delete three times. You can delete three times, zero, one or one, zero, whatever that substring falls. You can do that three times. So great. Let's start with Alice. One time, let's go to Bob. This is second, then go to Alice. This is third, 
and then let's go to Bob and Bob fails. So can I say that Alice to Bob to Alice and finally Bob, this can be quickly figured out by simply saying that V was of odd nature. So because V was of odd nature, I know that Alice won. Okay, this should make sense. V being of odd nature means every time the turns will alternate, alternate each other. And finally, they will land on Alice. Alice will do that move and it lands on Bob when actually V is no longer left. So Bob is going to not make a move. Hence, Alice being the main winner. And this subsequently tells us that if V is of even nature, then Alice is going to lose. So based on this V value, I can very simply figure out these two cases. If this is odd, if this is even, then I basically have to like, I cannot write it like this. I can maybe directly write. I have to print da. Da means Alice wins, else I have to print neat. That is Alice loses. Okay, so this is the V value that is the minimum of C0 and C1. Now, I said to you that let's assume this is right. And on that assumption, you were able to get the whole figure. But let's try to understand why is this right? Why am I saying that V is actually equal to the minimum of C0 and C1? We'll do a quick visualization on this. Okay, let's say the string right now is given. And the string right now has some zeros and some ones. Okay, so let's just say there are some zeros, some ones, some zeros, let's say and some ones. Okay. Now try to understand this for every, in this case, you can understand that C0 right now is five and C1 right now is four. Now carefully listen to this. Don't you think that for every one that is right now there, because the minimum of these is four, that is basically pointing to C1. Don't you think every one that is there right now, there is some zero that may fall adjacent to it. Let's just talk about this one. Okay. Let's say, or maybe I'll, I'll quickly change the string. Let's say you imagine that you had four ones like this and then you had zeros like this. Now you might think that this one and this one don't have any adjacent zeros to it, but don't you think the other ones do? Yes, this one has. So at any given moment of time, if you look at the one, any one, you pick up some one, there is going to be at least one which has a zero on the left or right to it. And if it has that, don't you think you can always pick up that one with that zero and delete it? Yes, I can. Let's say I pick up this one and yes, it has a zero next to it. Great, good to go. Let's delete this. Gone completely. Now, next time this one's open up, let's delete it. Let's delete this one with this zero that was now adjacent to it. Now this one and this zero are adjacent. Let's delete them. Okay, deleted them. Great, good to go. Okay, next time I can say, let's delete this one with this zero because now it's adjacent. Okay, great, let's go and deleted it completely and voila at the end what's there it's left only with one zero what does the denote overall can you visualize this this denotes that the minimum count out of zeros and ones was actually ones what that meant is now that you started clubbing ones and zeros together at the very end one got exhausted faster than zero yes because every time a zero was also getting exhausted, a one was getting also exhausted. Every time the count of one was also decreased by one and count of zeros were also decreased by one. So at the very end, what happened is from five and four, you went to four and three, you went to three and two, you went to two and one, you went to one and zero. And this is where you stopped because now you have no more ones. And remember to make a move, you need at least one zero, at least one one. So now that you don't have any ones left, don't you think you would have stopped there? Yes, you would have. Now, just vice versa this condition. Had there been lesser amount of zeros, same thing. You would have stopped after the zeros would have exhausted. That means clearly the minimum of zeros or ones right now in your string actually dictates how many times can you delete. And if that dictates how many times can you delete, don't you think I can simply say that the minimum of these two is actually this V value that was the number of time I could have deleted. So yes, that is right. I can visualize this, you can make some cases of your own, you will also understand how is this working. And now that we have landed at V, v which simply means how many number of times can actually make the move, then yeah, the simple denotion of the moves being odd or even nature gives me the answer da or net. That is again the idea that we discussed previously only, same thing, just formulated. Okay, so this is the whole thing. Now let us quickly glance at some test cases and see how does this work. So I'll quickly discuss cases like this only, not a big deal. Let's just say over here. So what's the zero and one count in this case that we had discussed previously it, by simulation? Just let's see 
if our idea works on this 2 and 2 now minimum of 2 and 2 is basically 2 only no worries now is 2 even yes 2 is even so don't you think the answer was net yes it was what about this case zeros and ones minimum was zero because zero has a count zero one has a count four zero four minimum is zero so zero is even again net see over here zeros and ones what's the count one one what's the minimum of one one it's one so the count is d the sorry the count is odd that means the answer is d a that is yes okay and even for this case that is over there i mean they have not given any answer to this but we can actually say very quickly that the number of zeros is 3 the number of ones is 4 so minimum of 3 and 4 is 3 3 is odd hence for this test case if s would have been like this you would have printed a yes or a da okay so this should make sense overall the idea is rephrased again what i'll say you have to simply count the zeros and ones minimum of that denotes how many moves can you actually make before nothing can be made more and those moves if are of odd nature then alice wins because you would be last chance stopping at bob where bob will never make a move or if it's even vice versa bob wins or alice loses okay this is the whole idea now if you get this whole thing you can draw some more cases and you will get a better grasp on this part let's actually quickly look into the code part and get how do we do this as we dictated it's very very simple you just take up the test case variable string variable and then you have count of ones count of zeros iterate in this particular string if it's zero increment by is one increment by one over here if it's a one and then operations or the maximum moves that you can make is minimum of these two and then if this operations are of odd nature mod to not equal to 0 then you know it's odd so basically that means da that is yes else this is net okay so that is all that is there in this problem now what about the time complexity pretty simple we have some time complexity that will come from inputting the string but we also have a loop over here so that's basically the same n order of the string then pretty much everything after that is constant so i can write time complexity to be of o of n order which means i have o of 100 now this is very nice because we wanted something like n square log and we could also also have gone but we have come down on a very optimized solution of o of n and space is again dependent on the size of the string only that is o of n again so this is o of 100 Okay, so a very sort of a clever problem, right? Just identifying that zeros and ones had something to do with this in the minimum count made the whole problem clear. All right, so I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching.